We're in Malta, we're going to look at two vases. For a, a, a newcomer or a layman to the vase market, to the antiques, vintage or old vase market, you, you come up against such a torrent of contradictory prices and designs that it's off-putting, quite frankly. So the first comment I'd like to say about vases is try try to relax about it and then and then and then tackle it uh, in a simplistic manner. So the, let, let us let us start by saying vases are meant to be in pairs generally historically, and nowadays that's become not so much the case. You'll find modern shops selling single vases. You 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 will find antique sets of vases have been divided, broken separated. So look at the vases, look, look at a pair of vases, think about whether there should be two, whether there were two. The vases are used indoors, vases are used in gardens, so there are different uses for, gar for vases. And fundamentally, if you exclude the sort of South American terracotta stuff and some of the Mexican stuff, you've got Oriental vases, and you've got European vases. So what happened in the 18th century and 17th century is the Europeans decided to copy the Oriental vases, which has just started to trickle into Europe. And you'll find, for example, blue and white Delft vases, which look like Chinese vases. You'll find in England there are uh, Staffordshire vases, which look like Chinese vases, rather like Wedgwood was creating ancient Greek style Etruscan ware, you have designs which, which migrate from different places. So you can, you, can, you can find a Dutch made Chinese style vase, for example. You can find a, an English vase like one in Rome, for example. So you've got all this mixing and cross fertilization and, and, and churn, and it doesn't really help the layman or the newcomer, but it goes on and you've got to know it goes on. So I'm probably asking more questions than I'm answering, but what we've got here are two Japanese vases and they, they certainly look Oriental. And only for many years in England, if someone didn't know whether it was Chinese or, or Japanese, you'd just say that they're Oriental, that, that covered it. And, um, but the, these are Japanese. What, what we've got is two, two porcelain vases and they're made by hand. One of the features you've got are the concentric rings which indicates they have been made on a spinning potter's wheel. They, they, are, they are usually, in this area, powered by a tread plate, not necessarily by uh, electricity, obviously, or um, mechanical. And you can feel the concentric rings all the way down to the bottom. Be aware they can apply these rings to cast vases, so it's not, you can't only go on the few at the top. So what they've done is they've made out of porcelain in Japan, in around 1910, 1920, they've made a pair of vases by hand, and then what, what they've done is they've added, while, the, while the, the porcelain was wet, they've added a foot, it's called a foot, they've added some moulded masks on a collar, which in itself probably wasn't added, it was done by fingers, but the, mar the masks have, have been added. And above the collar, you've got a flared rim, and a beefed up top rim, which is curled around, quite nicely done. So the characters on the bottom are hand painted. I don't know what they are. They're hand painted, they're not stickers, they're not transfers, and they are, they, are, they, will, they will tell what age, perhaps factory perhaps, customer perhaps, design perhaps, painter perhaps did the, the vase. The, the fundamental thing about these is they're not broken and most of them on the market are damaged or restored and the, the, there are different degrees of damage. For example, if you look at the bottom, sometimes they have microscopic chips which we, we would call nibbling, which aren't considered desperately important as you'd expect some nibbling with wear. 
and sometimes you get chips from carelessness, which people don't like. Sometimes you get firing defects where the pottery has cracked in the kiln or the glaze has reacted or crackled up. They're not considered desperate problems, but if it, come, if it comes to cracks, hairlines, chips, bits missing, or, or shoddy repairs, and, and the collectors don't like them, and the value is not marginally reduced, it is drastically reduced. So I bought two vases, they're, they're a pair, they're of a decent size, they're lovely colours, they have this Japanese hilly forested area it being depicted, you have a river, you have buildings, characters, beautiful decoration to the, to the rim and the collar and the neck and the foot. You have these wonderful signatures on the bottom or seals on the bottom and they're, they're not damaged. Those are in Malta, they are 300 euros and uh, if they were Chinese ones they would be worth three to four thousand euros uh, if they were in the same condition. Um, the, the Chinese pottery looks very similar and uh, it's very hard to tell the difference. Uh, only, only experience and comparing them with other ones and other, other ones in the market really will, will, will ever um, feed you the knowledge you need to make, to make the distinction. If you're looking at the, the Delft ones from Holland, the, the copies of the Chinese ones which the Europeans made themselves, you'll find they're often not porcelain, you'll often find they're made in faience which is a tin glaze, it's rather the same as Maiolica, um, and it's softer underneath. If you broke that up, it would break like a piece of glass and it would be white all the way through. If you broke a piece of Delftware, or, or Fayence, or Maiolica, or uh, Kimperware, it would be biscuit coloured inside, softer. So, get the books out, go to the auctions, watch the sales, watch the documentaries on, the, on YouTube, handle the stuff. The texture on these is ribbed and you can feel how it was made. If it was cast or modern, it would just be smooth and bland and have a certain st sterile nature. But the, the earlier pots, whether they're Chinese or Japanese or European, in fact, have got a texture. I hope I've, been, I hope I've given you some interesting suggestions there and, and tips. And I think they're good value. Um, I don't mind if they're Japanese or Chinese. Some people don't want Japanese vases, and traditionally the Japanese vases are uh, follow a lower band of price than the Chinese vases. I don't know what really why that is. They always were less money, and they probably always will be less money. It's not only a matter of age uh, or quality. It's just the, the Chinese ones tend to to to, to track higher higher prices. But if you if you want something decorative, which probably will rise in value. Then I think the Japanese pottery is a really good starting point for Oriental collections. Thank you.